For anyone who is visually impaired in the audience, um, what up, first of all. Um, as a visual description, I'll start by describing myself. I am a black African woman, five foot seven and some change. Um, I'm wearing black sh flats. Um, my hair is up in an interesting uh, situation. And I've got on uh, beaded earrings, Maasai earrings, and a black dress, which I call my power dress. I wear it when I need a bit of confidence. <laughs> I wear it when I need a bit of confidence because right now I'm sweating in many places. Um, my knees are like jelly and I really need to pee all of a sudden. Um, but thank you for having me. I had my first major eye surgery in 2010. General anesthetic, knife to the eye, two hours instead of the quick 40 minutes they had anticipated, and it didn't work. In fact, I came out of theater having lost more of my already declining eyesight. You see, since high school, I had been losing my eyesight, very slowly, very gradually, and at the time, I had no idea why. Glaucoma wasn't a word I'd ever heard before. None of my family had either. Then the ophthalmologist told me it's not just glaucoma, it's glaucoma the remix. He said that my glaucoma had already caused a lot of havoc in my eyes and that they will not be able to stop it. That it's more aggressive in black Africans because of the color of, of our eyes and that I will probably be blind by 25. Between then and now, I've had over 20 different procedures trying desperately to get back even a tiny bit of what I lost long ago. I was a teenager then. As my friends were discovering their paths and future ambitions, I was thrust into a world of darkness, grappling with the heavy burden of visual impairment in little Mombasa Island on the coast of Kenya. It's one thing to go blind, but it's another thing to go blind in a society that clings on discrimination, steeped with traditional prejudices. My name is Senator Crystal Asige, a human that is crazy about amplifying the voices of those who are overlooked and underestimated, the underdogs, like I have always been. I'm a fervent believer. I'm a fervent believer in making people feel seen and heard, no matter their ability or disability. If you find me on social media, it may look incredibly colorful. You'll see me in Parliament one day, in the studio the next, with politicians, the UK trade envoy to Kenya, then to a doctor's appointment in the evening. But in re reality, all of who I am work harmoniously to fulfill my assignment, my purpose. I feel like I've already lived five lives in one and encountered a plethora of lessons, each brimming with wisdom and perspective. However, the most crucial lesson I've learned is if all you see is what you see, then you don't see all there is to be seen. Let those words resonate because they encapsulate my journey. In the depths of isolation and despair, I learned that if you cannot change a circumstance, then change the way you look at your circumstance. Because what is the alternative? In my case, the alternative was to give up but that did not sit well with me. So I made the choice to either accept what is or commit to what could be, and I chose the latter. It became crystal clear to me that there is a difference between visual impairment and disability. This is visual impairment, but this is disability. I very quickly learned that disability does not discriminate. People do. In fact, disability can be the catalyst for unparalleled strength and adaptability. The most extraordinary gift my disability has given me is resilience, an unwavering determination to rise above adversity, and the ability to pivot and turn things around when they seem to be going left. I'm sure that's something that we all share here today as young people, right? First, fast forward. The Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs found me in my work. 
just a needle in a haystack of change makers like you and invited me to last year's summit. It was here where I got the news that I had been gazetted into the 13th parliament of Kenya. It was pretty wild. I came to one young world as an ordinary Kenyan, but I returned home as a senator. Now, I'm at the heart of Kenya's dynamic political landscape, la gra gracefully navigating its twists and turns. I am one of the youngest parliamentarians, one of the top performing female senators, and also voted top 40 under 40 in Kenya. The platform on which I stand today has played an integral role in shaping me into the person that I've become. It has infused me with the confidence that is nothing short of transformative. It's given me a glimmer of hope and inspired people who are young watching me, not only in Kenya, but across the globe. Given me a voice that I've since used to champion the rights of PWDs, the youth and women in Kenya. It has truly remarkable what confidence mixed with hard work good timing, and throwing in a dash of magic beans can achieve. Since the last summit, I've tirelessly worked towards making Kenya more inclusive and equitable. The laws that I am sponsoring now, such as the PWD Bill, the Kenya Sign Language Bill, the Learners with Disabilities Bill, the Startup Bill, the Public Participation Bill, and four major amendments to transportation laws to address increasing road crashes that are killing too many young people in Kenya today. I'm trying to pave a way for a more brighter and accessible Kenya for everyone today. Standing before you, I am not just Senator Crystal Asige. I am a visually impaired person rep representing people with disabilities who are treated as taboos pushed into the shadows and hidden from the faces of the world as if they are less than or, or, less, or less than. My mantra that I walk around with every single day is I have glaucoma, but glaucoma does not have me. When I spoke to you a year ago, I wore the same hat, carrying the weight of those unheard voices from this place of determination and purpose, I started the Crystal Asige Foundation, which is dedicated to creating an inclusive society to break down the barriers within our infrastructure, our systems, society, and culture. I aim to open doors of opportunities for, to marginalized groups, especially PWDs. I haven't left my creative side behind though, and I am still using music to get young people excited about, young, about current affairs. Maybe the next social media hashtag will read, Senator Crystal Asige sings in Senate. <laughs> After this session, I hope you will remember me as an example of a shattered stereotype. People with disabilities are not mere charity cases or prayer items in the neighborhood Bible group. No, we are individuals with skills, talents, and powerful inherent creativity that can surprise and elevate the world that you have never imagined. There, though I am now a politician, I am a person first. I won't barrage you with geopolitics and geoeconomics. Instead, I want to focus on leaving no one behind. I'd like to remind you that leaving no one behind includes yourself. Give your all, be authentic, embrace all aspects of yourself, and don't ever hide. In keeping with this year's theme, peace and re reconciliation can't work if we are separated and individualistic. It requires a collaborative endeavor. Remember, if all you see is all you see, then you don't see all there is to be seen. From here on out, ask yourself, ask who haven't you seen? What haven't you seen? And more importantly, what about you haven't you seen yet? Thank you very, very much. I'm not, sure. I'm not sure if you can see, but you've got a standing ovation. You can't see, they're all standing all the way up the conference.
champions. 2,000 of them. What a start.